The South Dakota State men are the reigning Summit League regular season and conference tournament champions. The Jackrabbits began their title defense at Western Illinois. Opening half, SDSU works the ball to Mike Dom in the right corner. He'll drive to the free throw line and hit the fadeaway jumper. Dom finished with 15 points in the game. Then next Jackrabbit possession, Tevin King gives to David Jenkins Jr. He pulls the trigger from deep and connects, plus the foul for the four-point play. Later in the half, freshman Owen King brings the ball up court and keeps it himself. As he drives baseline and finishes via the reverse for two of his ten points. And this one was all jacks from the get-go. Later, King gives to Jenkins. He crosses the man up and pops in two of his game-high 23 points. As SDSU opens up conference play with a decisive 100-58 victory over Western Illinois. The SDSU and Western Illinois women squared off next. Opening quarter, Jacks by eight, and they add to their lead as Lindsay Thunick finds Maddie Gieber in the corner. She splashes in three of her 20 points as SDSU leads by 11. Then late in the quarter, Western Illinois misses a free throw. Riley Cascio Jensen with a long pass up court to Macy Miller, who puts away two of her 20 points. Jacks up nine after one. In the second, Cascio Jensen picks up another assist as she drives and kicks to Tegan Larson, who rattles in the two-point jumper. She had 14. SDSU leads 39-32. And under a minute and a half to go in the second, Cascio Jensen with the steal gets it up court to Lindsay Thunick. She gives to Peyton Burkhardt, and the freshman from Aberdeen gets the bucket for the hoop and the harm. She added 11. So SDSU starts conference season 1-0, defeating Western Illinois 93-84. Day two of the Hoop City Classic continued in Mitchell. We'll have the highlights next. We'll be right back. After dropping their first two games, Will Gorman picked up its first win of the season over Pier last Friday. The Knights look for their second win in a row as they played tournament host Mitchell in the Hoop City Classic. In the first quarter, Mitchell senior Caden Hinker tosses a pass to Carter Jacobson, who dribbles once, fakes his defender, lays in two of his game high 16 points, and we're tied at two. More from the home team as Caden Sukup catches the inbounds pass and then tickles the twine for three. The senior had eight points and gave the Colonels a three-point lead. Later in the quarter, O'Gorman Jr. Zach Norton tips the pass away, then chases down the ball and he'll flip in two of his ten points. That gave the Knights a nine-to-seven lead. And then more from O'Gorman in the first as Brandon Fisher will find Luke Ronzik. He's going to drain the three-pointer. The senior had a team-high 14 points and gave the Knights that gave the Knights a four-point lead. O'Gorman goes on to beat Mitchell 67 to 43. Undefeated Bridgewater Emory opened the Hoop City Classic with Breckenridge, Minnesota. In the first half, Breckenridge senior Noah Christensen flies up and throws down two of his game-high 33 points. 5-2 Breckenridge early. Later in the first, Bridgewater senior Jamin Aaron comes up with the steal, then gets it up court to chase Aaron on the fast break. He lays in two of his seven points as the Huskies take a 7-5 lead. A few possessions later, Bridgewater on the attack again. Aaron dishes to Carter Dye, who dribbles around his defender and powers in two points. The senior had 15 on the night and gave Bridgewater Emory a two-point lead. This game will go to overtime, and in the extra period is Christensen feeding senior Jacob Marsh, who shreds the net for three of his 12 points. That gave the Cowboys a four-point lead, and Breckenridge goes on to defeat Bridgewater Emory 79-77. T area hosted Vermillion in a girls' hoops matchup. First quarter, T area junior Desiree Passwall drives along the baseline and finds Brooklyn Wilmonson on the back door for the open layup. Titans trail 6 4. A few possessions later, Vermillion gets the ball up court to Casey Herbster. She'll miss the first attempt, grab her own board, and put back the bucket as the Tanagers lead by eight. Then on the other end, Passwall will dish out another assist. This time she gives to Brooke Deckert, count the bucket plus the foul. Free throw is no good. T area trails 15 to 6. Then back the other way comes Vermillion. Lexi Plitzewhite will take it all the way as she's going to step through the defense and lay it in. And Vermillion picks up a 55-42 win over T area. And that's a look at sports.